Hey everybody, welcome back to a new video. Now I'm excited to show you guys potentially one of the best budget models of 2023. This is the Pecron E600 LFP. And if you're looking for your first power station or one that you wanna take camping, this is gonna be a great option. Now this power station is fairly unique, so let's go ahead and break down the features. Now for the advertised capacity, it's rated at 614 watt hours of capacity. It is using lithium iron phosphate batteries. They are rated at 3,500 charge cycles to 80% of the original capacity. Now on the front, we have a pretty large inverter. It's a 1,200 watt inverter. It does put out 120 volts and it is a sine wave, so very good there. You have multiple DC output options, including a 12 volt cigarette plug and a 100 watt USB-C port. And you also have a wireless charging pad on top. But one of the best features about this medium-sized power station is that it accepts up to 400 watts of solar charging input. And I will be showing you guys that later in the video. Now this power station comes in at an excellent price. On Amazon or on their website, you can pick this up for $399. And I do have a discount code for you guys, my viewers, to drop the price an additional 5%. So you can pick this up with the discount code for $379. That is right around 61 cents per watt hour. And there's not many power stations that can compete with that price. So in the rest of the video, we wanna see how this performs. Is it gonna be worth that price? Is it actually gonna put out its advertised capacity Capacity? Is the inverter going to work well? Well, in the rest of the video, we'll be putting it through a ton of different tests to see how it performs. And at the end of the video, I will put this through my power station grading system to see how it stacks up against the competition. So let's go ahead and jump into the DC output. This is where you can power all your 12 volt gadgets and charge your mobile devices. Let's go ahead and see how that performs. Now taking a closer look at the 12 volt DC options, you have a 12 volt cigarette plug with a dust cover and two 5525 barrel connections. You can press the DC out button to enable the power to these ports. Now with no load to the power station, we can see the DC output is regulated at 13.6 volts, which is great. I then tried to pull as much power as possible from each output. The 12 volt socket is limited to around 159 watts before it shuts off. And the 5525 barrel connections are limited to around 128 watts before they shut off. Now trying both outputs together, I was able to get a little bit more power at 161 watts continuous. Now moving on to the USB ports on the power station, you have a 100 watt USB-C port, you have an 18 watt USB-C port, and you have two USB-A ports that are capable of 18 watts each. I was able to get the full 100 watts output while attempting to charge my Energizer 320. I also was able to get around 30 watts output charging my EcoFlow River 2 using the 18 watt port, which was more than advertised. This device also has a wireless charging pad on top, and testing that out with one of my phones, it did successfully fast charge. Combining all these charging options together, I was getting around 143 watts output. Now I like to get an idea of the maximum total output that the power station can handle while using the 12 volt output and the USB ports together. And I was able to get around 260 watts from all the ports that I was using. Now some budget power stations will automatically shut off the DC output after a few hours. So a great way to test this is by plugging in a 12 volt fridge to see if it'll run for a full 24 hours without shutting down. I came back after 24 hours and the fridge was still running sitting at 36 degrees and the power station had only used about 33% of its capacity sitting at 67%. So this power station will work great for DC loads like CPAPs or 12 volt fridges that need to run overnight. The final tests I completed on the DC output were capacity and idle power usage tests. While draining the power station completely via the 12 volt socket at 10 amps, I was able to get around 566 watt hours of capacity. This is an excellent result of 91% when comparing to the advertised capacity of 614 watt hours. Now in the next test, I like to see how much power the DC output uses while sitting enabled and idle. I started the test at 100% state of charge and came back after 10 hours, and the power station was sitting at 95% state of charge, meaning that the DC output while enabled only uses around 0.45% per hour, and this is right on par with other models that I have tested. Now, in summary of the DC testing, I was really impressed with the capacity output. 91% is better than most of the other power stations that I test, so thumbs up there. I like that it has the regulated DC output, and also it does not have any auto shutoff settings. So this will make a very good power station for camping or portable needs. Now it only weighs 20 pounds, so it's very easy to carry it around. Also, you have this handle on the top that folds away when you're not using it. So you can carry it around, and then when you're not using it, tuck it away so you can stack stuff on the top, and it just doesn't take up extra space. 
Now in the next part of the video, I wanna test the AC inverter. This is for you know running appliances that you plug into your wall outlet. So let's go ahead and dive into the AC inverter testing to see how it performs. Now looking at the front of the E600, you'll see three AC outlets where you can plug in your devices. Pressing the AC out button for a couple of seconds will turn on the AC inverter. The first test I like to run on the AC inverter is a max load test for 15 minutes to see if it can handle the rated output without overheating. Once I started the test, I was pulling slightly under 1200 watts continuously, and using my oscilloscope, I was showing a pure sine wave output at 60 hertz with just a little bit of distortion. Using my voltmeter, I was getting around 118 to 119 volts output, so very little voltage drop even at max load. Once the fans had hit their max RPM during the test, I wanted to see how loud they were, so I pulled out my sound meter, and at three feet away, it was getting around 47 decibels. This is how they sounded. Now these were fairly quiet compared to other power stations that I have tested. A few minutes later, the timer hit 15 minutes and the power station passed the max load test, and overall, I didn't see any issues with the inverter. Since the power station has a 1200 watt inverter, I wanted to see if it could power my full-size kitchen refrigerator. When I plugged in the fridge, it actually failed to start the compressor. You can see that the fridge compressor pulled around 1600 watts on startup, which must be too much surge power for the inverter. A very small portion of my audience runs ham radio equipment or other sensor electronics on these inverters, so I like to test for noise that the inverter may put out. Using my new dirty electricity meter, it was showing around 1550 millivolts of noise. Anything over 2000 millivolts is quite audible on certain devices. For example, when plugging a guitar amp into the AC inverter on this power station, you could tell there was just a little bit of noise. Does the inverted noise matter for most people? In my opinion, it doesn't really apply to most real world applications. So let me know if you want me to test for noise on future power station review videos or not. The final tests that I completed on the E600 were for both the AC capacity and AC idle results. Draining the power station at a 0.2C rate via the AC inverter, I was able to get 560 watt hours of capacity. This is quite good for a small power station, again hitting 91% of the advertised output of 614 watt hours. Moving on to the AC inverter idle testing, I started with the power station at 100% state of charge and left the inverter running for 12 hours with no load. And when I came back, it was sitting at 77% state of charge, meaning that the inverter used around 23% of the battery or 1.9% per hour. Because this 1200 watt inverter is fairly large compared to the size of the battery of 614 watt hours, this higher idle power usage is expected. There are both advantages and disadvantages to having a large inverter and a smaller battery. Now in recap of the AC inverter testing, we were able to do 1200 watts continuously without any issues and the fans were very quiet in that test. Now when we tried to power the full size refrigerator, the inverter couldn't do it, which is the case for most of the medium sized power stations, they just don't surge very well. Now it did do really well on the capacity testing, we were able to get 91%, which was above average, so thumbs up there. But as a budget unit, you don't have all the bells and whistles. This does not have UPS functionality, and it did have a little bit of noise on the AC inverter. In the next section of the video, I wanna cover all the charging options for the E600. On the front of the power station, you have two charging ports. So let's go ahead and break down the differences. The top charging port is a 5521 barrel port. It has a limit of 100 watts and the maximum voltage of 25 volts. It's designed for 12 volt, 100 watt solar panels or car charging only. The bottom charging port is designed for much higher power. It has a limit of 400 watts and a maximum voltage of 95 volts. This is designed for charging with the wall charger or solar panels in series. Just FYI, you can only use one charging port at a time. This unit does not support dual charging. The E600 comes with this 12 volt charging cable so you can charge up in your vehicle. Using this cable is the slowest way to charge up the power station. When I plug this into my 12 volt battery box, I was getting around 61 watts input and it would take around 10 hours to fully charge. The next fastest way to charge the E600 is by using the included charging brick. This external charger is rated for 42 volts output at seven amps or right around 300 watts. When I plugged in the charging brick, I got 270 watts into the power station and this will charge the power station fairly quickly in about two and a half hours. The final way to charge up the power station is by using a larger solar array and the included MC4 adapter. I finally had some decent solar testing conditions this week, so I was excited to see how fast this would charge. 
I connected up three of my 180 watt Bouge RV panels in series and plugged them into the E600. I was getting around 381 watts charging input, which would charge the power station in about an hour and a half. This solar charging speed is quite impressive and is higher than most of the competition. Now, if you want to learn more about which solar panels are compatible with this power station, check out my Power Station 101 video about solar panels. The link will be down in the video description. Now, I also wanted to test pass-through charging or the ability to charge and discharge the power station at the same time. Many budget units do not support this feature, so it's important to make sure this one does. In my test, I had both the DC output and the AC inverter enabled while charging the Pecron E600 at the same time, so it does indeed support pass-through charging. Now, quick recap for the charging testing. Well, it was really cool to see 380 watts into this via solar panels. That means if you're camping, you only have a few hours in the day, you throw 300 to 400 watts on this thing and it will fill up. No other big brand power station company comes close to that right now. Um, you know, they're a whole capping at 200 watts. So very cool to see 400 watts. Now this does not support dual charging and it also had the external charging brick. Would have loved to see internal charging on this where you just plug it into the wall, don't have to carry the external charger around. Uh, kind of a bummer there, but it does support pass-through charging, meaning you can charge it and discharge it at the same time. This does have a one year warranty from Pecron. They do have an email support and a chat support. They do not have a phone number. Now Pecron has been around for a little bit. I did email their support and I got a response back. I just asked a question about the solar charging and they did get back to me. Um, I'd love to get your guys' feedback on how Pecron support is. So throw a comment down below. So anybody that watches this video, if you have experience with Pecron and you've had an issue with their power station, how did they treat you? Did they take care of it? Or did they just kind of ignore your emails and now you have a broken power station? I'd love to get that feedback. Now, one thing that I do like about Pecron power stations is they come with these hard cases. So, uh, you know, you have a place to put the external charging brick, the owner's manual, all the charging adapters, things like that. Um, basically, this hard case carries all that. So when you go on a trip, you just need to bring this and the power station and everything's just not jumbled around everywhere. Now, of course, I took this power station and put it through my power station grading system. Now, the reason I use a grading system is because it gives you guys the facts and performance of a device, and you don't just have to go off my opinion alone. Now, this scored a total of 8.5 points out of 10 points available. It lost a half point due to the noise on the AC inverter. It lost a half point due to not having smart app connectivity, and it lost a half point due to not having UPS functionality. So 8.5 points on a budget device is fairly decent. So check out the power station grading sheet down in the video description. You can see how this stacks up against the competition and all the other power stations that I reviewed previously on the channel. Now we're basically summing up the video here and I just want to share a brief pros and cons list about this device to give you guys a little bit of direction to decide if this device is right for you. So we're going to go ahead and start with the cons, then we'll do the pros. The first con on my list is Pecron isn't a huge brand name company yet. They only offer a one year warranty when a lot of other companies offer a five year warranty. Um, they do have support, but no phone support. So just things to think about. Now it's not such a big deal on a medium sized device, but if you go and spend, you know, five grand or something, that's where you really want to worry about that. Um, the next con is the external charging brick. I've already talked about this. Uh, it has an external charging brick, but there's no internal charging on the power station. Um, the other things I've kind of mentioned as well, no smart app, no UPS mode, and this does not uh, support expansion batteries. Now, a lot of medium sized devices don't um, really take expansion batteries, but you know, it would be cool to kind of have that as an option just in case someone wanted it. Now let's go ahead and move on with the pros. Um, I like that this has a larger inverter, 1200 watts, pure sine wave, did put out 120 volts at 60 Hertz. Um, I love the high solar input. That's probably one of my favorite features on this. Um, we got 91% of the advertised capacity on both the DC and AC output. That's a good uh, number there. It has lots of different outputs, lots of DC outputs, wireless charging. You're gonna be able to charge multiple devices and run multiple appliances off this power station. Uh, the price is a very good point as well. $379 after discount code. I'll have that discount code down in the video description if you guys are interested, but basically 61 cents a watt hour for a device that charges at 400 watts via solar. That's pretty awesome. And the last pro is the LFP battery. So um, it's safe. It's going to last a long time, 3,500 life cycles. So just 
very impressive for a budget unit. Now, I'd love to get your guys' feedback on this device. Throw a comment down below. What do you guys think about the Pecron E600 for being the best budget offering for 2023? Do you guys have anything else that you would recommend as a good budget option? Throw it down below. Thank you guys so much for watching. I love these review videos. Hopefully you guys love them too. Give me a thumbs up if you like the content. Thanks for watching. Hopefully we'll see you guys in the next video.